Yeah, because that was the day that Lisa phoned in sick. I could tell as soon as I answered, she'd ended up at Jamal's and couldn't bear the strip light. I'd left early because I fancied a quiet coffee at Friendly Calf, but then I gave three pounds to a guy outside the town hall, so I'd rare spare time but no spare change, and I cursed myself as he skipped along towards food and wine. Ah, yeah, I remember because we'd only been open about ten minutes. The clouds burst open like a slashed sack of rice. You couldn't even see the chewing gum on the pavement. We had two individuals in, and one couple. In three different languages, they informed me about the rain, as though I was stood there in flamingo trunks in a blindfold. Only one sale. Some milky bar buttons. But plenty of browsing, though, as always. Yeah. That was definitely the busiest day. I reused some blue tack. Stick the sign up in the window. Maximum five customers at any one time. Futile as the rest of it. Good evening, ladies and gents. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to this week's Insta session. Uh, this is number, I think it's number 32. Um, I started these back in May last year. Um, been running them every week since then. Um, and tonight, I'm very excited to welcome um, Rashika Wick uh, to perform tonight's uh, Insta session. Um, I was very excited to read a preview copy of Rashika's um, debut collection, Afterlife as Trash, which is being published by Verve Poetry Press in a couple of weeks. Uh, well, in April, actually, and it's available to pre-order now. So, I shall invite Rashika to join. Here we go. Hey, Hello, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, good, thanks. Good, good, good. Oh, I'll just turn you up a bit. There we go. Oh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm really looking forward to hearing you uh, read some poems. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for asking me. I was just really pleased that I could actually get to this point in the kind of Insta login and <laughs> here I am. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> We just all need a break from Zoom, don't we? Everything else seems to be on Zoom. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I get my eyes get really tired. So if I start crying when I'm reading or in the interview, it's nothing you've done. And it's not the emotion of my own poems. It's just like eye strain. So there we are. <laughs> yeah, no, screen fatigue is, is, is setting in, isn't it, big time? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Quite, quite toxic, actually. Yeah, I think so. Well, one thing I've really enjoyed whilst staring at my screen recently was reading your collection so thank you for sending that through um it's a really beautiful collection uh how do, how do you feel about it now that you're at the it's just about to come out in april are you are you excited i am yeah i mean it's kind of taken me quite a long time to feel excited about it but it kind of does feel because i've been sort of constantly editing it it feels now like it's probably about ready to go into the world and i'm i guess i'm a bit of a perfectionist so um, I could just keep mucking around with stuff forever um, and altering it and throwing bits of it away. That's just how I work, probably how many people work. Um, but I think there's a, there is, I'm quite happy with the flow through it and the sort of trash that floats through all of it. So yeah, yeah, it's okay. I'm feeling all right. <laughs> it must be, yeah, it must be difficult because obviously the, the, with your debut collection, it's that sense of finality, isn't it? Like once it's out, it's out, that's it. And I guess it's so different to, doing a set or whatever but, yeah, um, yeah definitely yeah. And, and I um, I didn't know whether I mean I've, I've, I've been writing stuff and I write quite a lot but um, I wasn't sure whether I was ready to sort of send out a collection but I thought I may as well just give it a shot and actually I was being mentored at the time by this incredible poet called Denise Saul who's amazing she's really amazing I really recommend looking at her work if you don't know her work and um, she said to me oh Rush no you're not ready <laughs> and then I, I actually had to confess to her it had got accepted and it was a really <laughs> weird embarrassing conversation but she was super lovely and she's like no I don't I don't think you are ready because I think I think you can be better than this um which I really like because I'm a bit of a sucker for kind of being told you know you can do better and like to, you know trying to push myself and developing further um, but then I thought, you know what, if somebody would, thinks it's good enough for it to be out there, then that's fine. It can just go out there. I mean, it's just a book. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of looking at it. And Verve is such a wonderful, um, dynamic, innovative publisher. Yeah. Um, 
so it's great to obviously to see you on Verve and yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to seeing it and holding a copy. It'd be really nice. Yeah, I have to um, say a big thanks yeah. to, to Stu Bartholomew because he, I didn't think that I was ready either and he persuaded me to go for it and um, it's just been a really interesting developmental experience. So, and he's, he's just brilliant. He's such a nice person. And I he really, really, really love the community, the sort of Verve community that I'm kind of dipping my toe into at the moment. Yeah, totally. Well, um, I've got some questions about your collection, but it'd be lovely if, you, if you'd like to share a poem first and then we can delve into some questions if, you, if you're up for it. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so cool. I'll, I'll start with, um, yeah, one of the, the poems that, yes. OK, it's called Ultramarine Pink PV15, part one. Can you remember that shade of angel delight? It was the time of Michael Knight and Pixie Boots, but I could not focus, reeling from the pink balloon, reminding me of intensive care ventilators and a Dutch sex doll I had seen at an installation, sitting with a vase of giant peonies, each like a face, sympathetic to her escape from a canal-side bedroom stained with tobacco. I remembered the school trip to Amsterdam, where I learned that sex is not a thing of beauty in itself, but could look like a multi-pack of salt and shake, each packet with its own blue sachet containing exactly 0.6 grams of salt. Part two. Sex is not a thing of beauty in itself. It is a plastic bag caught in the wind, seeking headlights. It is half a breath, a self-portrait, a white porcelain heart clamped between legs. It is a machine, a salt lick in the field, solid as animals come by, or bitter greens for health. It is a clock, a severed oyster, a dream of Orpheus or physical exercise. It is smearing blue makeup across the face and not looking down. It is sleepwalking, feigning sleep, electrocution from a plug socket, turning a musty page. It is not Freud and the patriarchy, it is biting filled candy until it leaks, falling sequins, a sick bag, a footnote, the beast whose face is faceless, a burning wound, a salve, bird entrails strung out across the lawn. It is both a whistle and a trained dog, a cracked jug seeping water. Wow, phenomenal. I love, I loved reading that, but hearing you read it as well, God, that's such a good poem. Um, which leads me to my first question. So, like, there's, there's a, I adore the imagery in the book. There's some wonderful imagery in there, but in particular, like the use of colour and the sense of colour really stood out to me. Um, so, I just wondered if you, if you could tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, thanks for asking about that because I'm, I'm really glad that you sort of picked that up because um, actually I was, I originally started writing a, a separate series of poems that was about colour, um, just because I was sort of thinking about colour and thinking about how colour is, um, you know, it's got its own language. And I remember when I was sort of an undergraduate, I was studying language and cognition and actually different cultures and different languages have got the same pattern of um, acquisition of words for different colours. And that's thought to be linked to survival type things. So, you know, you get your black and white first and then red comes in black and white. thought thought to be linked to, dark, you know, darkness and light and communicating about that. And then red is blood and sun. And then next it comes blue, which is to do with perspective and being able to talk about distance. So, you know, I was kind of yeah. in, really interested in that and then really kind of wanted to see if I could write to that and reveal another truth about what colour meant. Um, yeah. And perhaps it would be uh, a universal truth, perhaps, if I was lucky. So that was sort of like a series of prompts. And I, you know, was really researching a lot about colours and got this fantastic book called An Atlas of Rare and Familiar Colour, which just goes into the history of pigments and the history of um, how different artists through time have used colour and what they thought about colour. Um, so, yeah, that, so there, there, were, there was a separate series of, of colour poems and I originally wasn't going to put it into this collection, but then I actually thought it's such an enlivening thing. Um, yeah. Colour it just has such a strong impact. And I know that, you know, when, when people are depressed, quite often they talk about this sort of like absence of being able to perceive colour as well. And then that one of the first signs for, for some people that they're recovering is that they get 
they actually see color again or they notice it oh, wow. it's sort of much more vibrant um so yeah so i just thought yeah um I'll, I'll, I'll experiment and then i thought well actually it does fit in it does fit in with the collection because it's about the whole collection is about um living and um how to make living more enlivened and you know it's also it's quite political as well it's also about the, the structures that stop people from living the lives that they want to to live and it's about inequality but um yeah so you you were really perceptive to have picked up that color is like quite a strong thing that comes through because there are some of those poems that that are in there for sure it, yeah it's fascinating it really gripped it really gripped me and that was that was one of the things from the off because that poem's quite early in the collection isn't it and from that moment yeah. on it just yeah yeah absolutely yeah um, and i kind of wanted yeah. it also the the whole collection is is also sort of talking to you know Gaia and wanting us to sort of reconnect a bit with with Gaia and um you know the earth and the ecology and I just sort of see the colors as um you know connection to the earth as well you know sort of little yeah. flowers that come up through through the collection nice beautiful well would, would you like to read another poem yeah. okay I'll... cool let's see Okay, so it was Valentine's Day, which is variously celebrated or not celebrated. I never know how I really feel about it. But this, this poem's called Love Island, and it's not after the TV show. Um, <laughs> here we go. Love Island. I don't know if we are as nature intended. You say we left the garden a while back. Vodka and bathwater at the edge of the bandwidth. Hold it together, girl. The sky is a conversation. A storm blows our conjunction indigo and the cold is ever a pricking geography. I have to go home to get clothes, I tell him. Join up the dots of Orion. On the street, preachers abound, peaches, vipers, vast jokes about dolls. People can afford God and a drink. Besides, belief is a type of happiness as a crystal splits light and eyes are drawn to giant circle earrings. Blind people stagger past. Look at the birds, I tell myself. They are an anchor. I'm froth, sitting on the surface, breathing smog from an autumn cylinder. Strangers laugh, reassured by the pace of the day. Can't they see what's happening? You ask me questions that expose our bones, vibrating with calcium, your teeth, cyanide white and eventual a tender cover on my neck let's line the planetarium count electric muses you say i hold you in disbelief loved up to the hilt awesome absolutely fantastic yeah some killer lines in there like ian quoting people can afford god and a drink yeah just that's just yeah beautiful poem um so there's quite a there's a wonderful sense of different voices like almost overlapping throughout, whether it's different characters or like your own subconscious at various stages. I wondered if you could touch on that a little bit. Yeah, that's that's such an interesting question. I wasn't really um, too conscious of the fact that it it would be perceived as being so um, various in terms of the, the the different voices. And I think so sort of on reflection, that's that's probably two things. It's probably partly because of my process of writing it's very sort of collage it's very kind of fragmented and I tend to I just make notes on my phone um yeah. or scraps of paper and I, th I think a lot of writers do this and then you know it's only sort of in, in other kind of little collapsed moments that where I kind of put it together quite quickly us usually um and quite often the things will be things that I've overheard you know so it might be found speech or found text or uh, just a, a thought that is to do with another person. So maybe that's something to do with the different voices. And then I suppose because I'm working quite hard at trying to, you know, get better at crafting poetry and, you know, sort of editing and editing, I am also mindful of when I'm reading through thinking, you know, actually that is interesting to have it in that voice. I'll, I will yeah. do. There is that more, more of a kind of focused um, effort to kind of express different voices. And I think also it's just, um, you know, I'm Southeast Asian and, and we don't have this kind of growing up, 
you're never really there isn't a sort of cult of the individual you're always part of this but you know for better and for worse you're part of this kind of organism of other people and you're kind of constantly connected to others and I'm a cancerian so I'm, I can always see other people's points of view so I kind of got all of that so for me I I see lot I see lots of points of view anyway and that's just yeah that maybe that's why there are lots of voices in there and I know Amy Aker uh, read the script as well and she was like mm, an unreliable narrator and I was like yeah you're right <laughs> but that's that's not necessarily a bad thing <laughs> No, it's not a bad thing at all. No, yeah. it's, it, it's it's one of the things that again pulls you in, and it's quite. A, I felt like it was quite a, quite a fast pace in the collection. Like it felt quite urgent, as in, yeah. you know, you, you didn't stop reading. It was, uh, and I, that was one of the things that I really admired about it. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think that is because maybe that's partly because, um, again, it's that sort of I am actually usually moving when I'm writing the sort of the, the kind of core of the poem when I'm finding something to start building on it's usually when I'm driving and I've stopped at the lights and I do a voice memo or when I'm walking so there is that urgency there's that movement that comes in yeah. uh, but it's also to do with what what the collection is about which is reclaiming um self and time now yeah of course it's such a cliche but you know hopefully it kind of addresses it in a slightly different way or in you know the experience is, is of interest I, yeah, I certainly, I certainly thought so. Yeah, it was. It, it really is. It is a really unique collection. I, I really loved that that side of it. Um, great. Would you Would yeah. you like to share oh, another yeah. share another poem? Cool. Let's see. I don't want to take up too much time waffling. <laughs> As in, I'm, I'm, you know, I could talk all day about it, but I'd love to hear more poems. So, okay, this one is called um, Section Two of the Mental Health Act. This violent quill outlines the outliers. This spectral trill warbles twice off my bitten tongue until the section of dodecahedron faces us again with all its flying pills and ice teeth and shuddering. I know these strings thinning into nylon strands, snap snapping in sun, swoon truth in childhood, but all ears are soon brutalized and barricades mounted quicker than Italian crema in a sex demonstration. Have you got the right papers? They write in shorthand some things about love from temples in a democracy. In a democracy, everyone would be a friend and the dark sow would not roll in the fallow, sewing itself with blue silk surgically, a gift to the people from Orwell. Importance would be meaningful, penetrating dead spines entwined with milk whistles and forget-me-nots. Honestly, it's safer in a bar, waiting on a drink, wanting all to burn to clear it out. One blue whale excretion of ambergris, one bingo hall sigh like a flamingo throat wretch, or squirting plant food in plastic packets into vase water, delaying floral death waste. Water softer than the thin nighties of my daytime, hovering luckless and moving through the shifting walls of Unit 5 night shift, round vending machines and pale tea waterfalls, washing it all out, washing hung out to dry on the taut line, femoral line access to all places, but there's no geography left, access is a false consent, like confetti philosophy, or the word nice, Printed how on the biscuit, why on the biscuit, like an ingest, ingestion design on autonomy, 28 days in. And then there are notes on that poem, which is, the poem is in the voice of a great mind who suffers from redaction. During times of redaction, she creates a new language of trauma and philosophy, which are symbols brought into existence to be read. Awesome. Yeah, that's just so powerful here and you read it like that. It's just, yeah, it's just really infectious, that sense of urgency. It's not like, yeah, uh, it's it's great. It's almost like beat. I'd, just, I'd love to see it live and it, see it build up and culminate. It's, it's wonderful. Um, one, one thing I wanted to ask you was about the visual poems. So the ones that I picked out were the pill, vocal tics and erosion, which obviously I know doesn't necessarily lend itself entirely to performance, but like when people get the collection, they'll see they're almost paintings. Um, and I wondered if you sort of visualised them first and then built the words into the image or vice versa or? Yeah, I'd say that they, they probably came um, as images and ideas because I, I guess it's they come as ideas to begin with. So yeah. the, the image and, and the text then comes at the same time. Um, certainly I can talk, I probably there's one poem called Erosion, which is probably one of my favourite ones in the book. And... Um, that was a really interesting process. It was the one one day that I thought, 
I'm going to have a day to myself where I do exactly what I want, which sounds really selfish, but I mean, sometimes you have to, right? So I haven't done that in ages and ages. And I thought, hmm, people are talking about art, an artist date where they take themselves off to where they want to go. And I really, really wanted to go to um, Old Brompton Cemetery and visit Emmeline Pankhurst's grave, being a feminist. So that was, that's what I did. And I spent a rainy um, day there just wandering around. And it's so beautiful, such a beautiful place. Um, and I was just really fascinated by the fact that on a lot of the gravestones, only certain letters were eroded. You know, some of them were, had been eroded by weathering, um, but other ones seemed to be intact. And, you know, on exactly the same gravestones, then I was thinking, well, maybe that's, you know, that maybe there's a revelation going on here about the truth the truth for that person you know maybe it's the mm. spirit talking or something so so then um and that's how erosion was written so that that was the stimulus for that mm. particular piece so yeah so that was a very kind of just thinking walking visual experience um, wow. yeah and and the pill i yeah just came to me as a pill yeah well I, for anybody watching i urge you to get the collection so that you can see those poems because like i say they are like paintings they're just stunning i really love that i really loved seeing that thanks um, well it's just gone 10 to so if you've got any poems that you definitely want to share um yeah yeah time flies doesn't it <laughs> it does yeah it would be lovely to hear another one i can i can read the pill actually i think it's okay to read it and i can show you yeah. i can show you what it looks like so i don't know i'm constantly yeah. showing people concrete poems <laughs> Um, and then reading them. Okay. The pill. Upper. Stimulant, e.g. cocaine, amphetamines. Situated on higher ground, above another part. Higher in place, position, pitch, scale. The parts of a boot or shoe above the sole. Superior in rank, dignity, station. At another level. More northerly, further from the sea. Can you see the aurora borealis? Green ribbons pulsing. Disturbances in the magnetosphere caused by solar wind. Do we deserve to see nature regardless of rank, station, dignity? We are made of plasma and drugs, just like those from the other kingdoms. No different. Life is always prefaced and terminal. We are hired to perform all the dances on the road. Can you feel that bass drop? Those born with more synaptic blue feel more deeply. Are they higher, superior all the time, privileged, further from the sea? Downer, drug that makes you feel calmer, closer to the sea, a depressant or tranquilizing drug e.g. barbiturates, a dispiriting or depressing experience or factor, e.g. fascism, racism, inviting use of an upper, a period of consistent failure, inviting use of an upper, a cow or other animal that has fallen and cannot get to its feet unaided, homelessness, broken wheelchair, fatal stab wound to chest, inviting use of a downer and then an upper, look at the dim LEDs and the neon awning, misfortune, drag, bad trip, raw deal, once read in tea leaves by the season's drag queen in Bournemouth. It was raining heavily and hearts were sodden and reaching towards the sea. Too many can stop you breathing. <laughs> side, side effects. Uppers, rapid heart rate, sense of location of the heart. Heart becomes a musical instrument, expansion of the heart, failure to love, heart failure. Dizziness sense of physical spinning overrides societal spinning. An individual feels a heightened sense of control, fun, fallibility, enabling fun, free entry. Insomnia, wakefulness during sleep, counteracting sleepfulness when awake. Go to settings, zero hours to waste. Go to settings, lucid dreaming, physical advantage in the timescape. Downers, fatigue, enforced resting, taking control of stress that is structural in cause. Soft pillows, nests, reason not to perform gender stereotyped roles, impairment of memory, improvement of remaining memory, quality not quantity, wait an economical state until next software update, not seeking connection speed increase, memories of ebbing anxiety, shallow breathing, reduced NO2 intake, reduced particulate intake, adaptive in hotter weather, retention of higher percent of the self. So that's the pill and its side effects. Wow, amazing! Really amazing that it's just like, as a performance and as a visual art piece. That's just yeah, such a great poem. Was that a relatively recent 
a poem or no, is that, that quite old one? Or? That one is quite old. That one is quite old. I think I wrote it a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. Maybe one and a half years ago, something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. For some, pe for some people, that would be classed as a new poem. I think there's a lot of people who aren't as prolific. <laughs> so I one of my newer ones that I wrote it two years ago. <laughs> now that's, uh, yeah, no, brilliant. Amazing. And, like, I, I know you, you showed us it on camera. It's just such an incredible thing to see it as well. Like, I love that. Thank you. Um, I'm, so I'm, you've got... Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, I, I kind of, I'm, I feel pulled more towards... Um, more visual stuff actually so that's something that i'm really looking forward to hopefully spending more time doing yeah yeah well yeah but i mean that element of the collection is so strong and the, those poems the way that they're laid out and the way that you, it's an image as well as a poem i'd love to see how that develops like in your future work that'd be awesome thank you so you've got the launch well it's coming out in april is that right is it 11th yeah. of april i think it's the 20 something of April. 20th of April. So a bit away, yeah, but it's available available to pre-order now. Yeah, it's and, available to pre-order. Yeah. And it's coming out definitely by the 22nd of April. I think it's the 23rd. So, but yeah, you can pre-order it, which obviously helps small publishers. So um, not that Verve is that small, but they are an independent publisher and it always helps. So yeah, that would yeah. be, be great. Um, and if you pre-order it, it's free postage and packaging as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is. So that's <laughs> a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, it's entirely up to you, but if you fancy it, I reckon you've got time to share one more. But I don't want to, you know, it's up to you. I don't want to put which, pressure on. Which one shall I do? I can't um, Do you want to I, do? I really loved table settings, yeah. but, okay. like, it's, yeah. Let's do that then. Uh, yeah, okay. Table settings. Is signing a will an invitation to death? Is death a sugar skull to be eaten? Is eating fruit enough to stave away cancer? Is cancer a, bl a blighted star sign? Are stars still there when you look at them? Is looking an act of archiving? Are archives of value? Is value of value? Is there value in circular logic? Is the exit from circles photography? Is a photograph more accurate? Is accuracy a measure of truth? Is truth measured by beauty? Is beauty for dogs? Are dogs heart openers? Are hearts dormant until you love animals? Are animals more alive? Is life a measure of connection? Is connection isolating? Is isolation splendid? Is splendor a many colored plumage? Is a many colored plumage worn by death? Is death more welcoming than family? Are family aware of the future? Is the future full of cosmonauts? Are cosmonauts full of constellation? Are constellations enough? Is it enough that the glass is half empty? Is emptiness desirable? Is desire an invitation? Is an invitation sufficient for death? Incredible. Love that. Absolutely love that. I just, yeah, that was one of the poems that I kept going back to read again and again. Yeah, fantastic. Well, look, thanks so much for giving up your time tonight and sharing these wonderful poems. I'm really, really, really pleased that you were up for doing a session. Thanks. Um, it's been really, you know, you've asked me such interesting questions and um, thanks for having me on and inviting me. And oh, absolutely my pleasure. And fingers crossed, uh, I've said this to a few people, like when we'll, we'll meet on a stage at some point soon. Yeah. At the Poetry Festival, maybe. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, really miss it. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Cool. Take care. Well, you. take care. Yeah. Enjoy the launch. I look forward to getting a copy and yeah, I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Cheers. Bye. Uh, that was the wonderful Rashika Wick. So please um, pre order her collection. It's, uh, it's available for pre order now via Verve Poetry Press. So just Google Verve Poetry Press. Um, and as I said, if you pre-order it, you get free PMP as well, free UK PMP. So you can't argue with that. Um, we'll be back next week, same time, same place. Harris Ahmed is joining me next week, which I'm really excited about. Um, so yeah, seven thirty till eight UK time next week. Uh, my name is Matt Abbott. We are in some thugs. Thank you for tuning in and for your lovely comments. Stay safe, stay alert, and I'll see you next week. Cheers. Yeah.